Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Puerta. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We celebrate today the Feast of All of the Saints. So just imagine, here we are, gathered around this altar, gathered in our homes, and we're not alone. We are supported by the countless angels and saints of our community of faith. Their prayers lift us and support us. Their example inspires us. All those moments when we haven't followed our, our better angels, when we haven't loved as we should, served as we should, we ask the Lord to forgive us. Lord God, you sent your Son to teach us how to love one another and how to serve each other. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. He came to bind up our wounds and to forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came to gather all the people of the world into the peace of his kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you for which we earnestly long. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel ascend from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God upon their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, a hundred and forty-four thousand sealed, out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no man could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice. Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. 
And all the angels stood round the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas. On the rivers he made it firm. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. These These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Lord Jesus. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain. When he sat down, the disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This gospel, the Beatitudes, may be one of the most familiar in all of Scripture. Its litany of what it means to be blessed can be seen as the ultimate blueprint for living our Christian life. In the context of today's feast, it tells us, this is how you, how we can become saints. But do you really understand what that means? As we mark this All Saints Day, it's tempting to put saints literally up on a pedestal. The saints are plaster figures, and we put them on a shelf, we decorate them with flowers, or we adorn them with halos. We collect them in holy cards, we venerate them in icons. But to think of the saints that way reduces them to something merely decorative. And it makes risks making this feast seem unnecessary. So we need to hear what this feast says to us. It is ultimately a summons, a call or a challenge directed to us. Look. At, an, at it another way, all saints is nothing less than a dare. This feast says to us, dare to be more, dare to be a saint. Or you might hear that and laugh. Sainthood is a noble ambition, an ideal, but can we really be expected to attain that? Well, the short answer is, is yes. Because the great truth about saints, something we easily forget, is that they were just like us. They too were flesh and blood. They had their strengths and weaknesses. They were people of appetites and longings, ambitions, disappointments, vanities, and eccentricities. They were, quite put, simply sinners like us. That's how they began their lives. But it's also not the whole story of their lives. The simple but reassuring fact is that nobody's born a saint. It's something that you have to become. Consider St. Ignatius of Loyola. He was born a nobleman, became a soldier, drank too much on occasion, was a man of deep romantic desires. He was also, if the truth be told, a rather vain man. As a soldier, defending a Spanish castle in Pamplona from the French, his leg was broken by a cannonball. The leg was not set right. When he got home, he got the doctors to break the leg again because there was a piece of bone sticking out of his leg. The legs that he was so proud of wouldn't look very nice in the court dress of the time. And so, as the doctors rebroke his leg, they cut the ugly piece of bone out. Vanity. But this vain soldier became the founder of the Society of Jesus. Because nobody's born a saint. It's something that you have to become. Now, sometimes those who become saints aren't the ones that we expect. The saints might be the filthy, the rejected, the outcast, the homeless. Somebody like Benedict Joseph Labray. He grew up the son of a prosperous shopkeeper. But like St. Francis of Assisi, he felt called to give up everything and to follow Christ. And he spent his life wandering from church to church in Rome. He rarely bathed. He never washed his clothes. And some people were repelled by him. But the purity of his devotion 
This love of God moved and inspired people who saw him day after day. When he died at the young age of 35, the priests of Rome preserved his filthy clothes as relics. and They buried him in one of the churches that he loved so much. Today, he is patron saint of the homeless because nobody's born a saint. It's something that you have to become. Maybe the lesson is don't dismiss any of the saints. They're closer to us than we might realize. They've also struggled with sin and temptation. They've walked the journey towards holiness, sometimes stumbling, sometimes falling, but always getting up, moving on, resolving to do better, to be better, to aim higher. They work to be what this gospel is calling us to be, to be poor in spirit, to be meek, to be merciful, to make peace. This is how we begin to become what Jesus called blessed and what the church calls saints. It is a tall order. It's nothing less than a call to greatness. But this feast reminds us, whether we realize it or not, it can be ours. This kind of greatness is within our grasp. All Saints Day calls us to something beautiful. It reminds us of our great potential, the potential that lies within each and every one of us, the promise of holiness. This promise has been fulfilled in the countless people we venerate this day, people who are our models, our companions, our inspiration, our friends, our guides. Our saints give us hope because they assure us again and again, nobody's born a saint, but everybody, by the grace of God, can become one. Let us now profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered upon Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our Almighty God, out of love for us, has made us God's children and has granted us communion with the saints and light. Let us make our petitions with confidence, for God will give us everything we need to live as a holy people. That the Lord will bless those who are lowly and poor in spirit and be their inheritance forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will bless those who are in sorrow and be their consolation forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will bless those who hunger and thirst for eternal life and be their feast forever. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will bless those who search for God with a sincere heart and be their vision forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord will bless those who suffer persecution for holiness' sake and be their refuge forever. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with Pope Francis for children who are suffering, especially those who are homeless, orphans, and victims of war. May they be guaranteed access to, ed to education and the opportunity to experience family affection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Ever living God, we are gathered as your family to praise your name and honor your holy ones. In your kindness, answer our prayers which the saints offer on our behalf. Let us share the communion of life and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, to become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, our friend. Lord, wash me by iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of our sin for our holy and glorious holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation. We ask this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already gives you eternal praise. Towards her we eagerly hasten, as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with a multitude of saints and angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. 
people, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never stop gathering a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly pray, by that same Spirit, make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, to be poured out for you and for all people, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Botit Lachale our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family gathered here before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good, which is through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father. And so we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with to share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the world, have mercy Lamb of God, you take away the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but don't only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.